Hello. Welcome to Lesson 9 from Book 2 of Babette's Quick Start Guide to Theory for Fiddlers. My name is Babette, and the title of this lesson is Fifths Revisited. I'm going to read a little bit from this rather than just speak directly to you so I don't leave out anything. The importance of fifths and their relationship to the violin cannot be overemphasized. Anytime you play a note, and then you play another note in the exact same position on the next higher string, you have played a fifth. In Book 1, we learned how to form the building block of a chord by playing fifths on open strings. Remember that when we played G and D together, you had the foundation of a G chord. When we played D and A together, we had the basis of a D chord. And when we played A and E together, we had the start of an A chord. Similarly, if you use any finger and bridge two strings, you've played a fifth, which is a, the substance behind that chord. Now let's get our violins. Okay, we're going to play an A on the G string, which is the first finger. <coughs> and then play an A on the D string, also with that first finger, in the same position. Now we're going to play them together, and you've played a fifth. This is similar to playing, or it's exactly the same, only a different octave, as when we played the A and E together, using the open string. Let's have another example. Let's play G on the D string, which is third finger, and then play D on the A string by the third finger. We're going to play them together. And that's a fifth. Remember that open G to D is a fifth. So this is the same thing. Now let's have a little fun. Hope you still have your violin. Okay. We're going to start with open G, then go to open D, that's a fifth, then to open A, that's a fifth, open E, okay, that's as far as we can go that way, so let's find another E. We know we've got one on the first finger on the D string, and we're going to take that first finger to go to the A string B, and then to the E string F sharp. That's as far as we can go, but we can find another F sharp on the D string with our second finger. Second finger F sharp, then to second finger C sharp, second finger G sharp, and we're out of room again, so we find another G sharp, and this time we're going to find G sharp in the low first finger position on the G string. So we're going to change that terminology. Instead of saying G sharp, we're going to use the A flat. Remember, they are in harmonic notes. So we're going to A flat, first finger. Then first finger on the D string is E flat. Then first finger on the A string is B flat. Then first finger on the E string is F natural. Let's find another F natural. That's going to be the low second finger on the D string. Go up to a C natural. And finally to a G natural. And there you have it. You've just played around the circle of fifths. Now recapping, you played G, D, A, E, B, F sharp. C sharp or D flat, G sharp or A flat, E flat, B flat, F, C, and G. And even though it's easy to go from one note to the same position on the next string to get a fifth, did you know that it's actually seven half steps to get there? Okay, this is just a little graphic to show you the number of half steps that there are in a fifth. 
G to G sharp or A flat is one half step. Then that G sharp to A flat to the A is a half step. A to B flat is a half step. B flat to B is a half step. B to C is a half step. C to C sharp or D flat is a half step. And C sharp or D flat to D is a half step. And that totals seven half steps. Now, are you ready for the worksheet on fifths revisited? Well, of course you are. And here's question one. What is the interval that is the basis for a chord? That interval is a perfect fifth. Question two. How do you make a fifth on the violin? You make a fifth by going from one position on one string to the exact same position on the next higher string. If you started with an open string, you go to an open string. If you started with second finger, then you go to second finger. But it has to be in the exact same position. Now question three, you're gonna to need to play your violin for this one. You probably wanna pause this video for a little bit while you try to work this out. You're going to start on open G, and then you're going to play a fifth higher and fill in the blanks. And you're going to just keep moving clockwise around the circle until you have the entire circle filled. Okay, have you got it? Well, here are the answers. We'll start with G, move to D, move to A, then E, B, F sharp, C sharp, or D flat, G sharp, or A flat, E flat, B flat, F, and C. Well, here we are. We've reached the end of part one of book two, and we've had a couple of tricky lessons in there that I would think most of us need to go over more than once, so don't worry if that's the case for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again as we finish up these lessons. Thank you so much for following along with me, and until then, bye-bye.